This week, former Conservative Chancellor of the Exchequer and Health Secretary Kenneth Clark has suggested the Conservatives could do with a break from power, a chance to have a rest. Another Tory bigwig, Michael Heseltine, has echoed a similar sentiment. And even ex-Chancellor George Osborne, remember him, told the Times newspaper it wouldn't be terrible for the country if Keir Starmer became prime minister. After almost 13 years in government, are the Tories running out of steam? Is a stint in opposition what they need to regroup and re reunite around a leader and perhaps have a vision for the future? Or is Rishi Sunak the fresh start they needed? To debate this, I'm delighted to welcome two icons of the Conservative movement. We have former Conservative government minister Anne Widdicombe, best-selling author and television personality, no less, and uh, a very first appearance on Mark Dolan tonight. A very warm welcome to the MP for Redditch and Conservative Party vice chairman, Rachel McLean. Uh, Rachel, welcome to the show. Uh, do you think that your Thank party you. has run out of steam? Uh, you could do with a rest, as Tory icon Kenneth Clark puts it. Definitely not. And thank you, Mark, for having me on. And I don't think I've ever been called an icon before. So that, that's a first. So no, I, I don't agree at all with, with that statement that we need a rest. I think we've got a huge amount to do. I think we're all full of energy and determined to press on. And I think if you just look at the alternative that would face us, if Keir Starmer and his team did get into power, I think it would damage the country quite considerably. We do have challenges ahead of us, but the the way to tackle those is through conservative policies, conservative philosophies, and presenting policies that are attractive to our voters and to the country, such as lowering taxes and boosting growth, and of course, dealing with uh, small boats and crime and a whole number of other things. Uh, however, Rachel, we've got the PPE scandal, which gets worse by the day, Partygate, which ousted not the last prime minister, but the one before that, do try to keep up. The NHS is in meltdown. Uh, lots of industries are on strike. We've got the migrant crossings all on the watch of the Tories, sometimes a thousand a day. And of course, this is a party that hasn't got over Boris Johnson. Surely a break is the answer. Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't accept that. And, you know, look, we, we had party game. We've moved on from that. We have a new leader now. And I think the vast, vast majority of my colleagues, I'd, I'd never say 100 percent because we're talking about the Conservative Party here. But, you know, the vast majority are behind Rishi Sunak. Uh, we need to unite or, you know, we will die. And I think we've all realised that we have some really difficult challenges. I'm going to be perfectly frank about that. And you've outlined some of them. And there are more. But but the idea that the Labour Party could actually grip the crisis in the NHS and take on the unions, I think, is complete and utter nonsense. I mean, we would just see a country just completely in hoc to the unions all over again. Uh, that isn't going to deliver for people who need to get up and go to work or send their children to school. I think that's absolutely the wrong thing to do. And, you know, the, these people who've made these comments might be sort of elder statesman type of thing. Um, uh, but, you know, frankly, we need to look at the people who are in, in government now and support them to tackle these crises. And, I, you know, they have my full confidence in doing so. Anne Widdicombe, whether it's the net zero agenda, uh, whether it's the Chinese Communist Party policy of lockdowns, whether it's historically high taxes, the Conservative Party aren't conservative anymore. They need a period in opposition to regroup and find their political compass. Well, you see, I agree with your first statement, which is the Conservatives aren't conservatives anymore. It's one reason why I haven't rejoined uh, the party following the dissolution of the Brexit Party. No, they're not Conservatives. Uh, Liz Truss made a very valiant attempt to make them Conservatives, but unfortunately she bungled it hopelessly. Uh, but apart from that, there's, there's no real Conservatism there at all. This is a high tax, high spend party. Well, you know, that's not Conservatism. Uh, and uh, yes, we now are now getting some measures towards um, trying to uphold free speech, which is very, very welcome. But I want to see how effective they are, because that's at the essence of conservatism as well. Uh, but just look at the three people who have said that the conservatives need to go into opposition. Just look at them. Ken Clark, Michael Hasseltine, George Osborne. Now, I've got great respect for Ken and for Michael. I pass on George. But... Uh, they are all three rampant Remainers. And their hope probably is that if we have a Starmer government, 
uh, then we are going to put on the back burner all the Brexit freedoms, all the things that we could be doing to take true advantage of Brexit, which so far this Conservative government has not done. Uh, and I think that is a very large part of it. But if anybody out there is thinking, as a lot of people do, oh, well, you know, um, maybe they do need a break. A break from Conservative government means, by definition, a Labour government. You're going to have a government that's in hock to the unions. You're going to have a government that isn't really very clear about what it wants to do uh, about Brexit, uh, what it wants to do about Northern Ireland. You've got a government there which is achingly, achingly woke. I mean, Keir Starmer can't even tell us whether a woman can have a, a male appendage. He doesn't appear to know that. Uh, you know, they are achingly woke. Um, and I do not want to see the Conservatives go into opposition to put that sort of a party in power. What I want to see is a rebirth of conservatism. Rachel, since you're the vice chairman of the party, a rebirth of conservatism, not Labour. Can that be done, Rachel McLean, in the next two years before the next election? Can the Conservatives be conservative again? So I, I have a lot of sympathy for what Anne is saying. Uh, and, you know, I do obviously speak to my constituents and, and members of the public. And, and I do hear comments like that. Of course I do. But I think we do have to reflect that we have just come through these extreme global stresses. Uh, we, you know, you, you mentioned Liz Truss. I supported Liz. I, I thought her platform was phenomenal. Um, it had all the elements in it that I believe in. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, for whatever reason, the way she went about actually delivering it, unfortunately, was not a conservative way of doing things because she was just if you like, too radical, too quickly, and we all saw the knock-on consequences of that. I mean, I think conservatism is about being sensible with the economy, having a platform and a, and a set of policies that can grow our economy and generate wealth for everybody and stimulate business and investment, but also keep the economy on an even keel without too many shocks. Um, and we have had, of course, the global shock of COVID. We've had all the challenges with Ukraine and all the energy shocks. So our economy has been battered. It really has. But we do now need that stability. And I think we are starting to see that. It is quite welcome to see how the current government is, is grappling with some of that. I mean, of course, we would all like more tax cuts. I absolutely want that. I mean, that was one of the reasons why I supported Liz, because she very much was she put that front and centre, but it, unfortunately, it just wasn't realistic. It couldn't be delivered in that time frame. Um, and I think the current prime minister has been clear about his aspiration. He wants to be able to cut taxes. And look, we all want that. We all want lower taxes. It's taking money out of people's pockets and, and putting it back into the exchequer. And I very much hope that if we can get the economy into a better place and get that flywheel of growth going again, that is going to generate more revenue into the exchequer and we can start to see those tax cuts coming forward. And certainly that's the case that, you know, I make every time I speak to my colleagues in government. Rachel McLean, you didn't rate Rishi Sunak at the last leadership election. What's changed? You know, look, we've had those debates. They were very vigorous debates. They were very robust. You know, I regret that we actually had to have a leadership competition. We had to have it. And at that time, we had to pick somebody that we supported. Uh, as, I, as I said, I supported Liz Truss, but unfortunately, we all know, you know, we all know how that played out. And of course, I support the Prime Minister now because I think what he's doing is he has brought our party together. Uh, you know, look, he's stabilised the economy. We are now back to a much more secure place. We've seen some of those turbulence in the gilt markets and in the international markets pass. We can now look forward to a bit more of a period of stability. And I, of course, I support him because at the end of the day, as Anna's just said, what is the alternative? The alternative is to just have a Labour government. And, uh, very briefly, and, I'm gonna, I, mean, I'm... Like, I don't think that's in the best interest of my constituents at all. Uh, Rachel, I've only got a couple of seconds left. Um, just a quick word on uh, the last but one prime minister. It seems that the party grassroots are very torn over the defenestration of Boris Johnson. My impression as a former politics student is that the Tory party has been dogged by division over Europe for decades. It seems now to be dogged 
by division over Boris Johnson. I wonder whether that's the biggest stumbling block for the party. The fact that as a movement, as a parliamentary party, you don't seem to be able to move on. I don't agree, actually, and that's not what I pick up either from my members in Redditch or from my parliamentary colleagues. I think most of us now want to put that behind us. As I said, I regret that we had to have that leadership competition. Okay. I wish we still had Boris Johnson and he hadn't had all the scandals. He was a fantastic prime minister, but we are where we are. So I think we can come together. And I, actually, I think it's an existential threat for us. And and I think Whittacombe. that faced with the Labour government, the prospect of a Labour government, I think we are all going to get behind our current prime minister. Anne is the last word, so she gets the last word. What do you think, Anne? Closing thoughts. Uh, simply this. Boris, whatever else you may say, won an 80-seat majority. What the devil has the Conservative Party done with it? What have you done with it?